Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the new Ruko F11 Mini. It is a compact beginner foldable sub 250 gram 4K remote tilt adjustable camera, 5G Wi-Fi FPV, optical flow sensor, brushless motor, 30 minute flight time, GPS RC quadcopter ready to fly. So taking a closer look, it looks and feels very well made and it is very pleasing to the eyes. We have the brushless motors with the dual bladed floppy props. We got landing gears on the front arms and also rubber tipped landing pads on the body. And there are status LED lights on the rear arms. In the front, we have the 90 degree remote tilt adjustable, 130 degree field of view, 4K 5G Wi-Fi FPV camera on an anti-vibration mount. And we also have this camera protection guards as well, which protects the camera really well in case of a mishap. Now the camera will take and record 4K photos and 2.7K videos to both the micro SD card and to the phone app. Now the built-in DVR will support up to a 128 gigabyte micro SD card. A class 10 or higher micro SD card is recommended. Now the FPV video transmission to your phone can be set to either the 2.7K resolution or the 720p resolution. Now we have some ventilation cutouts next to the built-in DVR on this side here and three cutouts on the other side to match. And we have some ventilation cutouts on the bottom of the body as well. And we also have the optical flow sensor camera. And in the rear is the battery bay. There's a notch right there on the top press right here and release the battery and just simply pull it out and the battery is a 7.6 volt 2100 milliamp size battery that is said to be good for about 30 minutes of flight time now they do provide you with two of these batteries for a total flight time of 60 minutes which is really nice now charge it up via the micro usb port on the side with the provided charge cable. Now they provide you with two charge cables so you can charge two batteries at the same time and then your remote controller after that. Now in the rear we have the power button followed by four LED lights. So short press the power button to check the remaining charge left in the battery shown by the four LED indicator lights. Now a short press followed by a long press powers up the quadcopter once the battery is inserted into the battery bay. Just like that. Now a short press followed by another long press powers off the battery and thus to the quadcopter. So short press followed by a long press powers off the battery. Now simply slide it in until a click is heard to lock it into place. Here is the remote controller. Now the remote controller has a single flip out antenna, which is a working antenna. It has a flip out phone holder and it is spring loaded to hold your phone. We also have flip out hand grips to comfortably hold the remote controller. Now, even though the remote controller is a small remote controller, it feels really comfortable in the hands. Now up on the left shoulder, we have the dedicated photo and video buttons. And on the right shoulder, we have the camera tilt up and camera tilt down buttons. Now the gimbals are nice and smooth. And in the front, we have the power push button on and off switch. We have the one key to take off and land button and the compass calibration button. Short press to initiate compass calibration and long press to turn GPS on or off. And we have the smart return to home button. Press this and the quadcopter will turn around and head back and autonomously land itself where it took off from. 
or the home point. Now bolt sticks to the bottom and to the left will calibrate the gyros of the quadcopter. Now bolt sticks to the bottom and in will arm and disarm the motors of the quadcopter as well as throttle up and release will arm the motors of the quadcopter and holding the throttle down will disarm the motors of the quadcopter. Now the control distance is set to be good for about 546 meters and 120 meters in altitude. Charge up the 3.7 volt 380 milliamp built-in battery via the micro USB port. It is said to be good for up to 10 hours of working time. All right, here we go with the test flight of the Ruco F11 Mini. I have a 32 gigabyte micro SD card inserted, formatted, and the battery is fully charged. So a short and then followed by a long press. We'll power up the quadcopter. And that is the song that the ESCs sing on this drone. Power up the remote and up and down on the throttle completes the binding process. Now what you want to do is go into your phone app and I'm going to be using my iPad. So you want to go into the settings of your device. Go to your Wi-Fi section of your settings and connect with the Ruko F11 Mini Wi-Fi network first and then go into the Ruco app free downloadable app in the App Store so go ahead and check it out very sunny today I'm gonna go ahead and record three two one boom screen is recording so here you go let's go into the controls and look at that it tells you what to do so just follow and get into the interface. We should see Wi-Fi FPV and look at that. It's automatically telling you to calibrate your compass. So you don't need to even press that calibration button. So let's go ahead and rotate it horizontally like how it's showing. We should hear a beep. Okay, one beep heard. Now nose down or nose up, vertical calibration and double beeps telling us it has completed. Let's see, turn my volume on and now it's telling me to calibrate the gyros. Vertical calibration okay. All right, calibration is complete. All right, so the very first thing you want to do is go to the settings and you see how beginner was turned off well when you first get this app and you start it up beginner is turned on that'll limit you to 30 meters and 30 meters in distance and height so you want to turn that off if you want to get the full 500 and 120 meters and it also tells you the storage settings as well you can choose 2.7k or 2k and for real-time image transmission the Wi-Fi FPV transmission you can choose 720p or 2k so that is nice and one of the coolest things about this quadcopter and other Ruko products is that you have a find the drone feature where if you lose the quadcopter somewhere far away runs out of battery and it lands by itself it'll tell you exactly where it is and when you go into this feature it'll even show you a Google Maps to exactly locate where you are and where the drone is so you can never lose this quadcopter all right and finally we have some inch to metric conversion thingy that if you want to use inches or metric kilometers per hour it is defaulted to meters per second so let's go ahead and take some photos and see if it works take some photos with the phone app or the hard remote rather okay I'm not sure if it took a photo I didn't hear anything so let's see here okay the rear lights flashed so I think we took taking a photo there okay take another photo there okay I see that there's a little bit of a delay I'm gonna try and use the 
phone app to take a photo now. Let's see here. Okay, there's a little delay there. Another photo there. So you can use either the hard remote or the phone app to take photos. And let's make our rounds. And let's see. Let's see if it took some photos. There you go, taking a bunch of photos. Let's see, videos, no videos yet. Okay, so let's go and check this thing out and take a video. And the video button. And I see that on the app there is a countdown. So we are taking a video and the rear lights are flashing twice consecutively. So that will indicate that you are taking a video. That is That does not indicate that you are low battery or anything like that. Okay, so nice. Let's check out the camera tilt. There you go. If you hold it down, it will smoothly go all the way down to 90 degrees. And let's go up. And it will go all the way up to zero degrees. You can incrementally press it so that it goes down incrementally too, I suppose. There you go. It's starting to go down a little bit. Alright. But this thing doesn't have electronic image stabilization and... Uh, uh, a gimbal so if you pitch forward the camera will point downward so I'm gonna leave it at zero degrees for now until we check out like follow me and stuff like that so here we go it is recording screen is recording so let's go and check out the quadcopter the main features of the quadcopter the core features so both sticks at the bottom and in will shoot arm the motors, but it is not because we haven't acquired all of the necessary GPS. Or I am wrong here. You know what? The clock out there turned off. Yeah, I guess there's a... Uh... Yep. There's a time period that you are allowed to... take off so we went beyond that so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording I'm gonna keep my recording on the on-screen recording so I'm gonna turn my remote off turn it back on up and down and I have to kill my Ruko app here go back to the settings and I'm still connected. Start the app. Go into the interface. GPS mode. Okay, it is telling me GPS mode. Look, I gotta recalibrate. Okay, so every time it wants you to recalibrate. Okay. The pause calibration. Okay. All right. Now gyro calibration. Oh, long beep. We got GPS. Vertical calibration okay. All right. So we got calibration, calibration, and video is recording as well. So now we are ready to go. All right. I wasted too much time in the beginning. So forgive me. And that long beep indicates that we have acquired the necessary GPS for return home. Arming. See, now it arms. Okay, disarm. Throttle up and down. Let go. Arms. Hold the throttle down. Disarms. All right. Let's see if one key to take off works. Nope. You're going to have to arm it first. So let's arm it. And then. There you go. One key to take off works after you have armed the motors and check it out holding very steady here nice okay let's see if it yaws in place yeah pretty good it has a slight rear drift as it's yawing 
in place and there's a breeze starting to kick in and it's blowing that way and look at that it is holding its position nice let's see let me turn the GPS off long press okay GPS is turned off but look at that it is still holding its position because it's got an optical flow sensor so very nice let go yeah it drifts a little bit but look at how steady she is with the optical flow sensor now let me turn the GPS back on okay GPS is on and look at that it just stopped in its tracks from kind of drifting a little bit okay speed now if you press the pitch stick it will change from speed one and two okay so let's start off in speed number one Go up in altitude a little bit and full pitch and full yaw let's see the rotational speed as well as the pitch speed so there you go that's full pitch and full yaw and letting go the yaw and it's only full pitch so this is the speed of speed number one okay let me turn around let me just check the uh, FPV feed real quick and it is looking pretty good yeah it's kind of bouncy up and down because it doesn't have uh, a stabilization electronic stabilization and it doesn't have a gimbal so yeah see how it digs into the ground when you make a turn and now it's coming straight for me so it should be right here there you go I have to make a slight adjustment on the path so there you go that is speed number one and it's flying pretty good and it's very accurate in the controls I'm gonna make a u-turn right here and there she goes now let's go check out speed number two okay speed number two full pitch and that is the speed maximum speed at speed number two pretty decent and we got a little breeze kicking in and it is not affecting the quadcopter at all okay coming against the wind no problem all right here it is full pitch full yaw not bad at all Okay, letting go of the sticks, coming to a halt, position hold. There you go, pointed directly towards me. And let's check out the camera tilt, tilting down. And there you go, tilting down. I can stop it anywhere. I can go back up a little bit to adjust. One speed servo, going down all the way down to 90 degrees. So it's going to be looking straight down look at that perfect when you want to land on a spot a small area so you can see where you're landing and going all the way up to zero degrees nice okay so let's go ahead and bring it in somewhere right above the landing pad here that is the landing pad we took off from the table so it knows that as the home point so if I do a return to home it will try and land on that table which I don't want so I'm gonna land on the landing pad so let's check out the one key to land and it is coming down and there's a voice prompt and I can control the path at which it's coming down there you go almost got it in the center missed it by a little bit and let's position it in the middle now all right so let's go ahead and arm the motors and oops let me re-land it okay let me arm the motors and one key to take off and see exactly how high is the default height and that is the default height when you took take off from the ground okay all right so let's go and check out the return home feature 
letting go we are in GPS mode and it comes to a position hold right now okay it's holding its position so let's go ahead and hit this return home button return home it says yeah and it's rising up in altitude to 20 meter default height and it comes straight back and looks for its position okay oh eating some prop wash and it slows down and it's coming down nice and smooth let's see where it comes down looks like it's uh gonna miss it by a little bit okay not bad not bad all right that's pretty good anywhere near where it took off from you know that's pretty good so let's go ahead and arm it and manually take off okay so let's check and see if I can stop its return to home progress by hitting the return to home button or in the manual it says throttle up and down should uh, exit the return to home so let's see if that works return to home rising up in altitude and let me throttle up and down nope it doesn't work so return to home and yeah that works so we have exited the return to home by hitting the return to home button once again while it's coming back so so just in case you are doing a return to home and it is about to hit an obstacle like a tree or a building you can hit the return to home to exit return to home because it doesn't have obstacle avoidance so you want to do that manually so you always want to have a clear uh, visual the line of sight visual on your quadcopter okay so now let's go ahead and check out and see whether or not this thing has fail safe return to home so that's going to be how where it disconnects it loses connection from your quadcopter to your remote control to accommodate that to simulate that i'm going to turn off the remote control remote control is off it says in the manual 10 seconds before it starts to realize and it'll perform its fail safe return to home so let's see if it is true uh oh how long is 10 seconds oh there you go 10 seconds that is 10 seconds climbing up to 20 meters once again and it is heading its way back nobody around <laughs> okay all right coming down hmm where is it gonna land slows down okay let's just play it out and see where it lands it's gonna miss the landing pad again by a little bit so it's not a deadly accurate GPS positioning all right but it does come back so that is a good thing now let me turn my remote control back on and up and down on the throttle again should reconnect let's see yep we are reconnected okay now what I want to do is retake control as it's coming back from a fail safe return to home so turning off the remote control once again and waiting 10 seconds why is my remote control showing very low battery it is fully charged uh -uh. okay and I guess it's taking segments of recording because it's uh, showing 35 seconds so maybe uh, it takes like five minute segments of uh, video and it restarts auto saves okay fail save and I'm going to go ahead and turn my remote back on up and down and 
uh, I gotta hit the return home. Yep. So when it's coming back and you had, well, in this case, I had my remote controller turned off, but that's not an accurate simulation where you lose connection and the quadcopter is coming back and you still have your remote controller turned on. I would imagine it'll reconnect automatically, but if it doesn't, um, I guess you can exit the fail safe return home by hitting the return home button on this thing. Okay, so far so good guys. Ruko F11 Mini is proving to be a pretty good GPS drone. Now let's see if the uh, Circle Me feature works. The Circle Me feature should work even without a cellular service on your uh, device that you are using. So let's go ahead and see if that works. Fly around. Oh, oh look at that. It went backwards and it is starting to go on its left. Look at that. Circle me works. Let's see if I can push it away because it's a designated radius. So, yep. I can make the radius bigger so it's further away from me. And let's see if I can do that more. Okay, there you go. You can adjust the radius and you, if you pull it in, it'll start getting smaller. So push it out and it is getting larger and it's going away from me. And I think I maxed it out. It isn't getting any further. So there's a limitation to the radius. There you go. And let's see if I can go the opposite direction. Yeah, looks like it's going in the opposite direction. It kind of readjusts itself and looks like there we go. It's going the opposite direction. All right, let me return and go the initial direction. Oh, it has to readjust and it is going the opposite way again, the initial direction. Let's see if I can go up in altitude. Yep, and down in altitude. Okay, so you got all those adjustments you can make while it's doing the uh, circle me and there you go let's see how it looks yep hey pretty good okay to exit i guess you have to hit the app once again and we have exited the circle me feature nice and you gotta hit the arrow to get rid of the on-screen display okay I am not able to show you guys the follow me or the um, the plotting points. So let's see now. I'm going to have to switch over to my phone, which has cellular service. So we'll have GPS. My iPad does not have GPS. So I'm going to raise it up in altitude and I'm going to go and push it out and see how far we can go. Let's do a little distance test since I have 30 minutes of flight time. And I have the antenna uh, straight up, so I'm holding the remote controller straight up. You don't want to point the antenna to the quadcopter because that is the null spot. So the best spot is, uh, per uh, let's see, in perpendicular to the right angle to the uh, antenna. All right, let's see. I still got video and it's still going. Looks like 150 meters now. And it is still going. And I still got video. Looks like, yeah, I still got video. <sighs> Bobbing up and down a little bit. And perhaps the video is kind of going in and out. But I still see a little dot way out there. And it is reading 250 meters. And I think it has kind of stopped. Yep, 250 meters and I've lost video. So I'm going to let go of my stick and yeah, that is about it. I could go further, but I don't have video. So I'm going to go ahead and return home.
Yeah, so video is giving me a limitation. I could go further. I'm pretty sure it'll go 500 meters. But, uh, and look at that. I don't have anything. I don't have any uh, voice prompt telling me that it is returning to home or anything like that. So hopefully it's coming back home. I can see the dot. I'm not sure if it's moving or not. Because we lost Wi-Fi connectivity. Therefore, I cannot see whether or not it is coming back. Because everything is frozen on screen. Okay, I still see it over there. And it doesn't look like it's coming back. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the stick towards me. Because I pushed it out. And I do believe I see it moving. The return home is not working. Okay, let me pull it back. I'm pulling it back. I'm pulling it back. Oh, it's rising up in altitude. Now I have beeping going on on my remote control. And yeah, it is doing a return home. Okay, good. Okay, do I have video? I can hear the motors. I have no video. The video has frozen. So the video has limitations. And it is on its way back. To really test it, I'm going to have to put an all-in-one uh, camera and check it out like that. Hit the return to home and exits return to home. And I don't have any uh, voice prompt, so Wi-Fi connectivity is still lost. Let me bring it back down and see if it reconnects. Uh, it's not reconnecting yet. Nope, not reconnecting yet. Hopefully it reconnects. Sometimes it takes a while before it reconnects. But in this case, I don't think it's reconnecting, guys. Oh, there you go. I got video back. There you go. Wi-Fi connectivity is back and now it's showing the correct parameters, distance, height, and stuff like that. Okay, let's go and see what we got here. We got 38% as well as you see a yellow bar on the top of your screen. I believe that'll tell you how much battery you got left as well. It looks around the same. Okay, so let's go ahead and fly around and see if this thing has low voltage return home, which is one of the most important things as well, next to fail safe return home. But we don't have a geofencing yet. It is still going. And let's see how far I am. 70, 80 meters, still going, 90. And it went beyond 100. So we know that there is no geofencing as of yet so we are not in the low voltage return home phase and look at that so let's just cruise around and see if we can do some fpv on screen there i am coming towards me yeah unfortunate yeah but to keep it uh sub 250 grams you know you're gonna have to get rid of some weight so it doesn't have a gimbal i'm not sure if the electronic image stabilization needs to have another well chip or some kind of weight added to it electronic image stabilization though okay turning around but it is nice and smooth, so it's got brushless motors. 
So it is for an entry level GPS quadcopter for a beginner. Yeah, this I can recommend this. But if you are a experienced pilot, yeah, and you want to take smooth videos, then you want to go with something that has electronic image stabilization and or a gimbal to stabilize your videos. But if you are a beginner, you're not worried about that. You're worried about the core functions and how to fly, get used to controlling the quadcopters with your thumb on your stick and still be able to take some photos and videos. Yeah, this quadcopter can accommodate that very well. Everything is working on this quadcopter. And very long flight time, guys. Hopefully I have enough uh, battery on my recording devices to record all this. So looks like we got, let me take a look here. 30% left on the battery. Wow. So you can do a lot with just one battery. Yeah, 30 minute battery times two. So you get 60 minutes. So you can go far with this thing. And let's see. I'm going to go beyond 100 meters and play around beyond 100 meters. So once the uh, low voltage initial phase kicks in, I want to see what happens. It's supposed to come back and hover uh, near where you took off from. And then when, it, when the battery gets critically low, it will land itself. I'm not sure if it will land itself right then and there where it is hovering or flying once it hits the critical low voltage phase. Or does it uh, come back and land where it took off from? So we're going to find that out. In a little bit we're still above 120 100 meters so 120 meters and we are still good it's just cruising over there yeah there's somebody coming by and I'm flying right over them yeah cool Okay, where's the car? There it is. All right, let's go ahead and follow the car. Manual follow me, not me, but follow them. <laughs> All right, so there you go. You can follow somebody in an open area. It's not fast enough though. I'm losing them so it doesn't have the incredible speed at which I would like what's the battery life level is at 24 percent so let me go beyond the hundred meters once again fly around right around there yeah it just rained overnight uh oh it did something there that I did an input. It's kind of like lost con connection or something. There you go. Did that again. I can see it from here that it's just like bobbing. And it has kind of stopped. Ooh. And the reason why is because it is in the low voltage. It just initiated its uh, initial phase of low voltage return home. Is it going to come back this way? Hopefully so. And we don't have a flyaway quadcopter. And it is coming back this way. There you go. Let's see what happens. Does it come and land or does it just come back and hover? Okay. It actually comes back right above the uh, takeoff spot at about 20 meters. Oh, and it stops. It says don't return home. Drone low, drone voltage, low voltage and don't return home. So now it's giving you a chance to finish up whatever you were doing. And we shall wait until critical.
phase of low voltage. Now, I don't recommend you go beyond this phase. And it's telling me it's low, low voltage. So I don't want to go too far. Oh. Yeah, we, we can still fly. So let's see how long it is between the initial phase and the critical low voltage phase. Drone low voltage. Okay, do I have... Oh, it is coming down. Let me go ahead and pull it back because it is coming down. Okay, it was just going to come down where it was. So I brought it back. Drone low voltage. And I try to bring it back to the landing pad, but I missed the landing pad by a lot. Okay, so there you go, guys. The F11 Mini. Not bad. All of the core functions work really well. Let me go ahead and stop the recording. Oops. Uh-oh. Check it out. It has stopped recording by itself. Yeah, I didn't uh, stop the video recording. Hopefully everything got saved. All right. So on-screen recording is still on. So we got that. So let me go ahead and get out of my on-screen recording. Okay, on-screen recording stopped. Okay, so hopefully we got everything recorded into the micro SD card so I can show you guys the, uh, the flight footage. A uh, couple of things that we need to also check out is follow me and uh, the flight planner. The, you, when you plot the points and uh, you send it and it flies automatically. So flight planner and follow me next. Since we have another battery, I'll stick that battery in there and I'll use my iPhone and we'll see if that works. All right. All right, guys. So here we go with the second battery. Actually, this is the second day as well. Yesterday's flight didn't come out so well, so I'm redoing it. So we're going to check it out now. I got my phone installed here and we should be ready to go. So let's go ahead and check out the special features, the flight planner, as well as the follow me mode. So let's go ahead and click on the arrow. Hit the flight planner and let's zoom in a little bit here and plot the points. One point, two point, three point, four point, and then the fifth point, and then upload it. And it says the aircraft needs to be 15 meters at least. So let me go up and uh, I didn't know that. 15 meters, huh? Okay. That should be about 15 meters. Okay, so let's go ahead and upload it. Oh, it's still not 15 meters, so let me go up a little bit more. Okay, there you go. It even went up a little bit more. Okay. Flight path point number one. Oh, turns around, goes to path number two. Okay, let me, uh, no, I got the uh, SD card recording as well, so I don't need to flip back and forth. So we're looking at the points on the display. And heading over to point number three. Yeah, it works really well. Nice. So everything is working really, really nicely on this drone. The only issue is that it doesn't have an electronic image stabilization. If it had that, wow, this would be absolutely fantastic. All right. Okay, making it over to point number four. Awesome. And finally, making it back to point number five, which was close to point number one. Cool. Yep, flying autonomously. Hmm, that didn't seem like point number one. Well, pretty close to it. I guess we started off right about here. 
Okay, so let me exit out from the flight path and hit that icon again. I should be good to go. Hit that arrow again to get rid of the display and manually bring it in. Now time for some follow me action. Okay, follow me. Right about here should do. So let's go down with the camera angle. Okay, it's got a slight delay for some reason on my FPV feed. I'm still waiting for the camera to go down a little bit. Okay, there it went down a little bit. All right, here we go. Wow, there's like a few second delay on my video. Not sure why. Okay, so let's try the follow me. And it is responding. So let me go and take a little walk here. Yes, it is following me. I'm going to continue to walk away. Yep, and it's slowly following me. I can see it bobbing slightly. Not that bad though. Some car cutters have a bigger bobbing when it's trying to follow you. Oh, a lot of ants. Watch out. All right, there you go. Follow me works great. Let me go towards it now. Let me walk towards this way and see if it moves backwards. Hello, I'm underneath you. Oh, now it responded. It went that way though. Ha, very slow to respond when I change directions. So if you are on a uh, bicycle, skateboard, or little scooter, or motorcycle, then you're probably gonna outrun the quadcopters follow me mode if you're going too fast. But a slow walk, yeah, I believe it'll follow you pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna give it another chance. Okay, I'm gonna start walking towards it. And this all kind of depends on your phone's GPS coordinates too. Look, now it's responding good. It's uh, flying backwards. It hasn't repositioned itself. Nice. And hopefully it's taking a good video of myself here. Okay, so there you go guys. The follow me and the point of interest, not the point of interest, but the flight path. So I'm gonna hit that icon to get out. Hit that arrow to get rid of the display. All right. So I guess that'll conclude the review of the Ruko Mini or Ruko F11 Mini. We pretty much checked out everything. And this is a pretty decent quadcopter, I would say. I recommend it for a beginner. You can fool around with all these features. And you got a very long flight time of 30 minutes per battery. That is amazing, 30 minutes. Yeah, this video is way too long in my opinion, because we have to check out the flight time as well. Maybe I'll try to edit and cut out a lot of stuff to make it a little bit shorter. But I like to keep my reviews real time. I don't want to chop it up and just show you guys the features. I want to show you guys all the mistakes that I make 
and the mistake that the drone makes as well you know so there you go going back home now letting go of the sticks coming to a hover position it above the landing pad and one key to land I can redirect this path a little bit there you go all right just a pretty awesome quadcopter guys I highly recommend it like I said so that'll do it for this video of the Ruko F11 mini thank you so much for tuning in and watching have a great day and we'll see you again next time